a lot of that stuff is like kind of inspiration for us to make it true. You know, if somebody comes up with something, a very popular rumor, then we'll make it true, animality is being one example. And, um, and the, uh, you know, Reptile was a hidden character in Mortal Kombat 1, and, you know, people would say, oh, there's a way to control him. So, you know, we, we put him in Mortal Kombat 2 as a controllable character. And so, you know, a lot of what we, of what we see and, and hear uh, in terms of, of rumors is, is, is the, the basis for, for some of the, uh, the stuff that we add in the, in the following. People actually pull the game uh, ROMs out of the, the out of the boards in their games, and they look for text, and they try to find um, any sort of clues as to what else is hidden in the game. So what I what I've done is I put you know fake text in there, just to you know to uh, kind of like like teasing the the, the the players who actually go that far, and I put you know I put Ed Boon wins, John Tobias wins right next to all the text that says, you know, Scorpion wins, Reptile wins, or whatever, so people think that, oh, you know, they're, they're in the game. The thing that I, I really, like, want to see in games is just intensity, bigger than life intensity. You know, a lot of people write, make simulators, you know, they'll make something that's like, that simulates reality, and, you know, to me, I think reality is boring, and that's the whole reason why you play a video game is to escape reality. So when you punch somebody, you know, if you make them fly the proper distance, that's boring. So, but if you make them fly, you know, 20 feet in the air, if you make them, you know, you know, uh, you know just anything that's just as outrageous as humanly, inhumanly possible. John came up with the. Uh, I remember John coming in and describing how he wanted to do sub zeros fatality in the first game. And I was like, oh man, that's, that's a bit extreme, isn't it? And then he was like, no, it'd be cool, you know, and then he, he, he went ahead and did the, the graphics for him, and then I put him in the game, programmed it all up, and, and we were looking, we called everybody in from the company asking what they thought, and they were like, they were like, oh, that is so disgusting, but you got to keep it in. I'm a good player, definitely not a great player. I've, I've seen players that are just, you know, beyond what I thought you is, is, is beyond any point of how good you can get, um, at least what my perception was. I mean, there was, they got to a point where they knew nuances of the game that I had no idea existed. You know, we, 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 they would show us some combo and we'd be like, oh, I didn't know you could do that. With Mortal Kombat, um, we wanted to, again, create a backstory so that, to kind of give the characters a, a validity to give them a reason for existing and to give the players uh, a reason to attach themselves to certain characters. Liu Kang is, is our traditional noble uh, you know, Shaolin monk. He's, he, of all the characters, had the noblest cause uh, for being involved in the whole mess. Uh, Shang Tsung uh, was initially inspired by sort of all the, the the uh, wise old men you see from the from the old martial arts movies, you know, with the long, thick white eyebrows and the long white beards. And Goro was just sort of uh, was sort of us trying to emulate, you know, some of the classic monsters you saw, kind of growing up in the movies, the old Ray Harryhausen movies. You know, there's always a big cyclops and things of that nature. And sort of Goro, we wanted to be sort of a version of of those old classic monsters. Initially we included the ninjas in Mortal Kombat because ninjas, again, in, in martial arts are such a popular, uh, are such a popular, uh, I don't know, staple in that whole, in that whole genre. And, and uh, we wanted to include ninjas and we wanted something different about them, something a little bit supernatural. And, uh, and we also wanted to add some color to their costumes because I think typically ninjas dress in black so that you can't see them. And our ninjas, you know, got the bright blue and we've got the, the bright yellow on them. And that was just sort of to add some color to the, you know, to the... Initially, Sonya uh, never even existed in Mortal Kombat. Um, we created a character uh, who was going to be an African-American uh, U.S. Special Forces uh, character <laughs> in, in Mortal Kombat. And his name, uh, Jax's name, was Curtis Stryker. Uh, in Mortal Kombat 1, and as we went on, uh, it looked like we were only going to have space for six characters, but we, we wound up 
uh, finding room in for a seventh character and decided that we wanted to add a female. Um, at the time it was kind of a rush thing and, and we decided to kind of apply the Curtis Stryker character who initially was, who eventually became Jax, but wanted to apply Jax's story to Sonia. And, uh, you know, and so she sort of became the Special Forces agent. And, uh, and uh, then, you know, Kana was created to kind of be her nemesis and give her uh, a reason uh, for being in the tournament and give, create sort of a conflict for her. The graphics will, are the initial attraction. You know, when somebody looks at a game, you know, the cool graphics kind of attract a player to it, and that will pull in the first token. Um, and then it's, I think, after they play it a few times and they realize, hey, this, this feels good and it's fun to play, that's what keeps them coming back. And that's what I think has made Mortal Kombat last so long, is just that it's the combination of good gameplay and good graphics. I consider myself a, a good player at Mortal Kombat. When we first test the game and, and it first gets out there for that first month, I am probably uh, pretty capable of kicking anybody's butt. But uh, you give it a month or two and and uh, the players just latch on to certain elements of the game and, and uh, I just can't win anymore. <laughs> Here's a way cool tip using the Shang Sun character. What you do is you throw your ground skulls three in a row then while your opponent is up in the air, morph into Cyrax, and while your opponent is landing, throw a net at him. When the net hits him, execute the uppercut. This one inflicts major damage. In order to be more combat free, you're going to have to go through two boss monsters. The first one is Motaro. Beating Motaro consists of doing your ground combos and getting away quickly. For instance, Cabal, walk up close to him, do high punch, high punch, and then low punch while you're holding down on the joystick get out of the way quick. Your second challenge would be Shao Kahn. To beat Shao Kahn, hit him with an uppercut or any other move that knocks him on his back. Then before he gets up, you can hit him with an uppercut again. Repeat this move until he's gone.